What are traders and analysts thinking of the uh, world supply and demand estimate that was released uh, under an hour ago? Well, let's find out from one of them. Brian Hoops joins us now. He's with Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri, and he joins us from his office. All right, your first blush response and reaction to this now that the algorithmic trades have kind of settled down a little bit. Yeah, you know, it was uh, kind of bearish for the corn market, but not totally unexpected. The uh, soybeans a little bit supportive, and again, not totally unexpected. The market, the uh, USDA kind of went in the direction that I think the trade was expecting, but the reaction has been very muted, very benign to the uh, report. Wheat has been really the upside leader as the U.S. made some major revisions to the world markets, and that's really what's caught the trade's attention this morning. Russian wheat crop was down almost 4 million metric tons from last month, and they lowered the exports as well. Australian crop down uh, one and a half tons, Canadian wheat crop down uh, one ton from last month. So all these uh, world numbers are starting to uh, pull back a little bit, and that may open the door for U.S. exports as if we can get a, a decent quality type crop. We certainly have enough supply. The USDA increased the yield numbers. I think this is the second largest on record for U.S. wheat production this year. And uh, overall, you know, our balance sheets still remain pretty large for wheat at a billion bushels. That's the fourth consecutive year. But we may see an uptick in some export activity as the world ending stocks were dropped almost 8 million tons from a month ago. And uh, that caught the trade's attention with some buying interest in this wheat market. Do you think that that is because of uh, weather problems? Because one of the things that everybody was concerned about uh, three, four months ago was our competitiveness in the global wheat market. Yeah, exactly. We just are not competitively priced when we rally our wheat market because Russian wheat is, is priced much cheaper. And uh, now, that, as I said, this may open the door, but the Russian wheat crop, even though the yields are down, the protein levels are really high because of some dryness and, and heat that they've had in their country. So it, it did reduce the crop size, but when you have a high protein levels, that's what's desirable for countries. When, so I could expect that Egypt would be a pretty aggressive buyer of a country like Russia's uh, wheat crop this year as they are harvesting because of the high protein levels. Our U.S., even though we have good supplies, uh, we just don't have that high enough protein that will get exported to another country. Sure. Well, you mentioned corn in this report. Let's look at these numbers here. Um, one of the things that was interesting was um, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about demand just yet. Let's go to the corn market as well as some of these other markets. We've got the corn right now back to the uh, higher side. We've got the September up three and a quarter, the December up three pennies, four 42 and a half. August soybeans up one and three quarters, 860, or I'm sorry, 896 and a quarter. The November is up two pennies at 914 and three quarters. The um, September Chicago wheat up 11 and a quarter at 516. Kansas City wheat for the month of September contract up 12 and a quarter, 453 and three quarters. Anything on the demand side of this report that surprised you? Well, this one thing that surprised me on the on the soybean side of things, uh, new crop uh, or old crop beginning stocks actually were lowered by 20 million bushels. Uh, they decided to, to decrease the crush a little bit, and um, that narrowed up the balance sheet just slightly. Um, then you look at how they structured the new crop soybean ending stocks. They lowered it by 250 million from last month. Part of that was because of production, um, but they didn't really do much in the way of demand trends. They did increase old crop corn carry in numbers by 145 million as the exports have fallen far below what the USDA was originally expecting. They lowered those by 100 million and really just left uh, the new crop balance sheets unchanged for as far as exports and, and ethanol demand for both corn and soybeans with most of the uh, changes to the balance sheets resulting because of, of beginning stocks and production changes based off of the uh, surveyed acreage numbers. And I think a lot of the trade is just uh, ignoring these production figures because we know we're going to get a resurvey from the USDA in about two, uh, three weeks of time. Yeah, that report's going to uh, has the potential to uh, shake things up here a little bit. Brian Hoops will join us on the other side of this break. Stay with us here on the Thursday edition of the Marketing Report.